Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost, or what we also will call ordinary time in the church. Welcome to all of you who are here in the building and those of you who are watching online. It is just good to be together as the body of Christ. Today we begin a new cycle in our narrative lectionary. We've been following this lectionary for some years now, so it should be familiar to you. Uh, this is where we follow the story of God's relationship with creation as it's recorded in Scripture. And so we begin this fall with that story in the Old Testament, or what is sometimes, sometimes called the Hebrew Scriptures. We'll follow that storyline through until Christmas, where we'll begin um, our journey then through the Gospel of John, through until Easter. Today we start at the very beginning with the first story of creation that's recorded in Genesis chapter 1. Now one of our Bible storybooks at home introduces the story like this, and I really like it, so I wanted to share it this morning. It says this, Long ago, before telescopes and microscopes, before scientists discovered everything they know today, People told stories about the beginning of the world. I want us to hold on to that introduction today in our worship um, as we hear this story to remember that it is just that. It's a story. It's not a science textbook. It's not meant to be taken literally in that way. And that's also, you know, partly why we actually have two creation stories in Scripture, right? If you continue on reading in chapter 2, we have a second story about Adam and Eve. So it's pretty clear that for the folks who gathered these stories together, they weren't so concerned about how there were different details in each one, because they both hold truth, they both teach something to us. So I want us to hold on to that today. What does this story have to say to us? Well, it says something about what creation is, that it's good, that God created us, that God loves us. Um, it tells us something about our place in creation. And that's something that we'll reflect upon today in worship. Please join me in a moment of silence now as we prepare ourselves for worship. I invite you to rise in body and spirit as you are able for our call to worship. In the beginning was the Word. All things came into being through Him. In the Word was life. And the life was the life of all people. Our opening hymn is All Things Bright and Beautiful. Let us join in praising God through music.
of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite you to join me in praying the prayer of the day. Beloved Creator, everything in heaven and earth bears your signature. May we ever rejoice that you have made us, and that you have made us your own, through the loving kindness of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Please remain standing for our scripture song. creation, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 2, 4a. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And God said, Let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome the sky. And then there was evening, and there was morning, the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening. And God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and for years, and let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night, and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves, of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, 
Let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all of the wild animals of the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, see, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. a long reading of this first story of creation. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> I'll say I toyed around with the idea of shortening it up or maybe doing um, like a children's Bible version. But in the end, as you know, I decided to stick with it because one of the things that I think is important about this story, what it really highlights almost to the point of being perhaps tedious or monotonous is that sense of order in creation. And I think we get a sense of that when we read it responsibly, as we did this morning. We see how each of these six days of creation follow a similar pattern. God speaks creation into being step by step, bringing order out of chaos, light, sky, vegetation, sun and moon and stars, fish and birds, animals, and at last, humankind. Created last, humans are given dominion over creation. We're put in charge, tasked with responsibility for God's good creation. The thing is, we know very well that humans have often not been very good caretakers of this good creation. I think we just have to look at the news cycle, especially over the summer, with all of these stories of extreme weather events, to, to know that the climate crisis is very much real. It's impacting us in very challenging ways. We haven't been very good caretakers at times of God's creation, and we haven't, I don't think, really understood the order of God's creation. In the second half of the 20th century, the prevailing wisdom among many ecologists was that trees needed to be released from the struggle of competition. And so that's where we get that practice of thinning forests. And biologist Jane Benyus, she remembers how midway through her forestry degree in 1977, she found herself pointing a can of spray paint at an ironwood tree because she was to mark it as part of a release cut in their experimental forest. So that orange slash would tell loggers which trees to fell, poison, or girdle anything that might compete with the saw timber crop. And they were taught that this practice of thinning would help the oaks and walnuts, that it would free them so that they could get more of the water and light and nutrients. And I think we look at that and say there's a certain sense of logic 
in that. We know in a world of limited resources as humans, it makes sense that if we don't compete, we are going to be left out. For Jane Banyas, though, uh, when she was marking those trees, she found that it was an excruciating exercise because as she was doing that, she would look at this mature forest that was just down the road, one that hadn't been cut for 200 years, and yet she could see that it was full of healthy trees and plants of all kinds and of all ages and stages of growth. And this curiosity, this noticing, it led her to wonder if perhaps there was something more going on in these forests that they were missing. The thing about the story of creation is that while it highlights this sense of order in creation, when we look closely, we see that the order is not what we might expect. God somehow creates light and darkness before a sun and a moon and stars. Where does that light come from on the first day? Then God creates plants before the sunlight. How do those first plants grow? These little details are maybe just curious. Uh, I think what they do is they point us to the fact this is very much a poetic story. It's not a scientific textbook. And while I don't think that it's the point of the story for us to try and nitpick all of these sort of little um, things that don't quite match up to what we know and observe in the world, what it got me thinking about was how often there is a place and purpose in every, for everything in God's creation, and that we might not always fully understand it at first. That there is this order, um, even when maybe it doesn't immediately make sense to us, and it's that invitation to listen, to wonder, to be curious. Jane Benyus's curiosity about this healthy, diverse, 200-year-old forest led her and others to discover another view of ecosystems, one that saw plants as cooperators as well as competitors. So in a mature forest, the canopy trees nursed the saplings beneath their branches. They created more sheltered, nutritious conditions in a plant-helping plant process that ecologists call facilitation. So these canopy trees shade seedlings from the drying sun, they block the winds, they fertilize the soil with their leaves, and as time passes, one community of plants prepares the way for another. Annual plants build up the soil for perennial shrubs, and those shrubs nourish the saplings that grow into forests. And more recent science, even shows that trees will actually share nutrients through their root systems, through these networks that we can't see, it's all underground, but they have documented this, and so they can see how these mature trees, the canopy trees who get the sunlight, um, they can take that carbon that, and photosynthesize it, it goes into their roots, and it will nourish these little tiny seedlings that are just coming up in the forest that you would think would it survive because they can't get the sun where it's so dark. More and more, we do hear these stories of how Western science is rediscovering this inherent wisdom in creation. There's examples of seeing how cooperation and not just competition is part of that inherent order of things. We're also seeing, uh, when we listen and pay attention, that this wisdom is something that has continued to be passed down in indigenous and traditional ways of knowing. This concept of facilitation, this metaphor, this idea, I think is one that's worth paying attention to for us as people of faith. As we think about our place in the order of creation, Facilitation as a metaphor helps us imagine how we are an integrated part of God's good creation. 
So just as creation does depend on humanity to care for it well, we, of course, we depend on creation for our sustenance and life. More than just as a resource, but as part of this network of all of life. Facilitation, this idea helps us remember that while we may have a special place, perhaps in God's creation, as ones who are charged with um, having dominion over creation, that we are part of this system, a system that depends on cooperation and mutual support. So I think especially if we understand ourselves or we see ourselves in that role of having dominion, of being given charge of creation, part of that task involves responsibility and care for every part of God's creation. And I love that image of the mature canopy trees in a forest that share their nutrients with smaller trees, ensuring that they not only survive, but they can thrive, that they can have a good life. As we face this time, um, the daunting challenge, the overwhelming challenge of climate change, I think these are the shifts in thinking that are so important. And this is a wisdom that we carry in our own faith tradition. It's a wisdom, a hope that our faith offers. There is indeed order and beauty in God's good creation, an order that is grounded in cooperation and care, more so than competition. I see this wisdom in our creation story, that this is one of the truths it points us to, one of the teachings, and a truth that then we also do see reflected in the natural world. Part of God's good creation, we humans are of nature. We are not separate. And so as we face this challenge of a climate crisis. May God create in us curious minds and humble hearts to listen and learn from the wisdom of creation. Amen. Our hymn of the day is Creating God Your Fingers Trace. I'll invite you to stand as you are able. Worshiping at home today, I invite you at this time, if you're with someone else, to greet one another.
together with a sign of peace or take a moment to reach out to someone by text um, or phone call to let them know you're thinking about them today. Those of us who are here in the building, I ask you to stay where you are, but to turn and give a wave or sign of peace to those around you. Let us now come before God in thanksgiving, and as the words of our operatory invite, I ask you if, uh, to put out your hands as that sign of offering ourselves and all that we have to Christ's service. Just as your spirit first brought our clay to life, so now breathe your healing into all who crave wholeness, especially those we name before you now. Creator God, hear our prayer. We pray for our siblings in Christ, for the people of Fellowship Mennonite Church in Moncton and their pastor Laverne Roth, for the people of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Leamington and their pastor Sylvia Swatoschuk. Creator God, we pray for those in our weekly St. Peter's prayer cycle. Jason, Colleen, Shana, and Sammy, Jean, John, and Marjorie, and Don and Betty. Creator God, you speak the word, and it is so. Receive our prayers and give us such hope in your promises that we never hesitate to ask, knowing that you hear us when we say, Amen. And so, we gather these prayers into one as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
You may be seated for a couple of announcements. A reminder that this Wednesday is our monthly council meeting, Wednesday night at 7.30. So all of our council members can be there this week. I also wanted to let you know that later today we will be celebrating the baptism of Asher Rose, who is the son of Josh and Krista. This is one of those challenging pieces of the pandemic. Uh, baptism is a sacrament that as Lutherans we celebrate in the community together. Um, as we continue to live through these extraordinary times, and especially um, as things are, you know, limits around gathering and with children not having vaccines available yet, um, we decided to be cautious, and so we will have that baptism um, with Asher's family and. Uh, I know there will be some folks from the congregation there. And so then what we will do is next Sunday in our morning worship, we will have an acknowledgement and a time of prayer for Asher. And I hope I'm going to get some photos from the family as well that we can share with you. And again, as we navigate through this with things changing all the time, hopefully it's not something that we'll have to continue doing. But for now, this is how we're going to try doing this and see how it goes. Are there any announcements that I missed from Council or anything else that folks need to know? Yeah, again, we're just with worship. Our plan is next Sunday we are going to be here at 10. Of course, if things do change drastically with, with case numbers, and this is that time with school starting up that we know things can change, uh, we will communicate that to you. But otherwise, we hope that we will see you in the building and that you can join us online as well next Sunday in the building here at 10, and then later on um, it will be uploaded online for you to view. I invite you then to stand and receive God's blessing. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Our sending hymn is All Creatures Worship God Most High. 